forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. All right, we look at the satellite radar picture here tonight. Look at the storms that have uh, fired and crossed the Mississippi and into parts of northwestern Illinois. Those storms are going to try to move in here overnight tonight. They will most likely weaken as they get here, but uh, some of our western counties may actually pick up on some rain here uh, late tonight into very early on your Friday morning. It is warm and it is muggy out there. Upper 70s, it is still 80 in Springfield, but it actually feels like 84 with the humidity that we've got presently. Out the door in the morning, may find a little bit of rain. I don't think everybody sees showers as you step out the door, but some of you may encounter a little bit of rain to start the day, but things are going to clear by the afternoon. We'll talk more about those overnight storms. Let's know if any severe weather could occur. Coming up, WCIA 3 News starts. Now from WCIA 3 News. We want to help you get this through, but it is our job to represent the residents of this county. An ambulance service says it needs more money to keep running, but a plan to keep them funded hit a snag. But they need a plan B. State police are done with their investigation of a woman who drove off an unfinished bridge. But work is just beginning for someone else. We're all outside playing games, double dutch food trucks. You've probably been to your share of school open houses as a kid or parent, but we bet you haven't been to one like this. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. This is a fast track tax, and that's why we're against it. Let, let's back up. Let's find out what we need to spend. Let's do it the right way. This township board wants to take its time deciding whether or not to raise taxes to keep an ambulance service from shutting down. But the company says it doesn't have the time or money to wait. Good evening, I'm Jessica Coons. Paul is off tonight. The Northern Edgar County Ambulance Service only has money to stay open until July of next year. They came up with a solution. Create a special taxing district for the six townships they serve. All those townships were in agreement except for one. WCI3's Jennifer Jensen is here. So Jennifer, Ross Township has the problem with this. Was there any resolution at tonight's meeting? Jessica, the meeting tonight was left open-ended. The deadline for the special service area has passed. So now they're facing a new challenge of coming up with another plan. If there's no funding, there's not going to be an ambulance service in this part of the county. Jeremy Neal is a paramedic for Northern Edgar County Ambulance Service. His job could be in jeopardy. On average, the ambulance service goes on about 500 calls per year. It brings in about 220000 and costs about 450000 to operate. They're not generating enough money to make up the difference. They serve 3,500 people between the six townships and three towns they cover. The ambulance department suggested creating a special service area in time to receive tax payments in 2020. That would pay for the cost of the ambulance service. All the areas they cover were on board to raise property taxes by 0.2%, but Ross Township refused to agree to that. We want to help you get this through, but it is our job to represent the, the residents of this township. The board wanted to give people the chance to vote on whether or not to raise taxes, but there's limited time until the ambulance company runs out of money, so the clock is ticking to decide on a different plan. If this ambulance company shuts down, the areas they cover would have to contract out to other cities further away. Kathy Lentz with Pleasant Meadows Senior Living spoke at the Ross Township meeting to share her concern. No, it would be catastrophic if we did not have an ambulance in town. I personally have sat on floor with a 90 year old resident who's fallen just in the very short amount of time it takes for the wonderful Christmas ambulance to get there. It seems like an eternity and for us to wait 20 minutes or longer would be catastrophic. While everybody at the meeting agreed the ambulance service is valuable, the question of how to pay for it remains unknown. The townships have another option to consider raising the tax levy in each area to pay for the ambulance service. No telling when a decision could be made on that. In the control room, I'm Jennifer Jensen, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Jennifer, thank you for that report. Northern Edgar County Ambulance Service has been open since 1982. It started as a volunteer department. They've had fewer volunteers in the last few years, so the reason they need more money now is because they have to pay more staff.
First responders are keeping an eye on each other this week in particular. It is National Suicide Prevention Week. The things first responders see and deal with can take a toll. Champaign's Fire Department has programs in place to help firefighters take care of their mental health. The Champaign Fire Department has had a very proactive mental behavioral health program since 2013, which includes um, a peer support team that is um, created by um, right now 13 members of our fire department who are trained specifically to, to provide peer support. He says the best thing first responders can do for each other is to build relationships, that it's easier to have tough conversations when someone is having a hard time. New at 10, one person escaped a house fire in Charleston today. This happened near 19th Street and Van Buren. No one was hurt. The American Red Cross is helping the family who lives there, and officials are still investigating how it started. Another house fire is being investigated, this time in Danville. It happened on Nicholas Street near Williams last night. The house is vacant, but firefighters were told people who are homeless sometimes stay there. They did not find anyone, and no one was hurt in that fire either. Following up on a crash after state police say a woman drove off an unfinished, unfinished bridge, troopers are now handing over the details of their investigation to the Champaign County State's Attorney's Office. You might remember this crash from last Tuesday. Police say 28-year-old Asia Marshall drove off the unfinished Bradley Avenue Bridge in Champaign. Her Jeep, as he saw, flew toward 57, stopped only by concrete barriers. She got a ticket for not obeying traffic signs. Today, state police told us there was a toxicology screening. Troopers say the results of that and the other details of their investigation will go to the state's attorney as of this afternoon. That had not happened yet. We have an update out of Vermilion County. Demolition at Fair Oaks Housing Complex in Danville will be wrapping up soon. The Public Works Director says the project should be done by the end of next week. They took out building number six on Tuesday and they're working on removing debris. He says they're a little behind schedule. They found some of the building information they had was incorrect and they have found unmarked utility lines. The project was supposed to cost $110,000. It could end up being $140,000. While one city is working on demolition, another is focused on construction, and the university there says it's paying off. Enrollment is up at the U of I. It broke 50,000 students for the first time in the school's history. Hundreds of millions of dollars are going toward new projects this year. That includes expanding residence halls and improving areas of campus, like 6th Street. Wright Street also got a facelift thanks to the MCOR project. Building a new living spaces is good, I just also think that you should add on to halls like Allen Hall or LAR, halls that don't have the same air conditioning or accommodations that the six-pack does. I feel like there's more construction on the actual campus. I feel like in previous years it's been like Green Street or kind of like streets surrounding campus and more so now it's on campus. <laughs> The U of I's student population between all three campuses is now at 89,000. The goal is to have more than 93,000 students by fall 2021. One school decided to take a different approach to its open house tonight. Franklin Steam Academy in Champaign combined its open house with a block party. They had food trucks, games, and a DJ. The principal says they had a traditional open house for about 20 minutes and then moved outside to start the fun. She says this new approach was all about community and family engagement. We decided that we wanted something uh, more of an energy, family, um, just positive vibe for our open house this year. And one of our um, one of our school counselors, Danielle Gray, actually said, "Well, you know, block parties are just like um, a pillar of a community." She says this was their first annual block party and hopes even more people come out next year. It feels warm now, but hospitals and pharmacies are already preparing for this year's flu season. The season typically picks up in October and November. It peaks between December and February. Doctors want you to get your flu shots before then, so your body has a couple of weeks to build up immunity. The reason we do them is for twofold. One, to help prevent the illness in you, but also to help to, the spread to others. So unless you've had a severe reaction to flu shots in the past or certain allergies, it is a good idea. They've proven that it helps to reduce missed work and also helps to reduce um, giving the virus to those at-risk individuals who could have more severe reactions. 
Young children and the elderly are at the biggest risk of suffering from the flu and complications. For a list of upcoming flu clinics, you can go to WCIA.com. Now, last flu season, which was a long one, roughly 57,000 people died from the flu and complications from it. Overall, about 41 million people had symptoms. Almost 20 million went to the doctor. 610,000 were hospitalized. It is one of our favorite spots to visit, what's now back open to the public. Plus, it could be the next major tool for farmers, how the next generation is getting a look at it now. Plus, sometimes waiting is the way to go, how sitting out one season is paying off for Illinois Center.